this work is on efficiently solving a fundamental graph problem, that is the minimum cut problem, in a number of computational models, namely the sequential cut query and dynamic streaming model. This is a joint work with Anupan Nanukai at KTH Stockholm. First, we will define the minimum cut problem and we will then proceed to state our result. The minimum cut problem is one of the fundamental graph problems. The mini minimum cut measures the connectivity of a network. Informally, it is a number of links that needs to fail in order to make a network disconnected. So the higher the main cut, the harder for the network to become disconnected in case of link failure. That is why it is important to find out the main cut value for designing any large network efficient. In the next slide, we will pose it uh, formally as a graph problem. Given a graph G with N nodes or vertices and M edges with edge widths, a cut is a set of edges whose removal disconnects the graph. In this figure, the edges crossed by the blue dashed line is such a set of edges or a cut. A cut is associated with a cut value, which is the total weight of the set of the edges participating in the cut. The minimum cut is a cut with minimum cut value. In the figure, it can be checked that the cut associated with the blue dashed line is of value H and is the minimum cut. The goal is, given such a graph G, find the minimum cut of the graph. The min cut is a classic graph optimization problem. The standard textbook for learning a randomized algorithm contains a randomized min cut algorithm in the first chapter itself. This is an algorithm designed by David Kaga and works by randomly contracting edges. This has running time of order n square log square n. We are, however, interested in, in, in another min cut algorithm designed by Kaga which is more efficient and has running time m log cube n. Throughout, m is the number of edges and n is the number of vertices. Kaga's second algorithm, although being more efficient, has a few issues. First, the design of the algorithm makes it hard to implement in other interesting computational models. The algorithm being a dynamic programming algorithm does not make it any easier. Second, even though it is efficient asymptotically, it is mentioned by Kager himself that the constant factors can be fairly large in practice. Kager's algorithm works for graphs with weighted edges. Improvements have been made in shaving of the log factor in the upper bound. Henzinger and others designed an algorithm with complexity m log square n, which works for simple graphs, that is, graphs with unweighted edges and no parallel edges are allowed. This is a crucial restriction, but it is important improvement nonetheless. Recently, Gaffari and others designed an algorithm which, which, with, which is clever, but a simple random edge sampling algorithm that shapes off an, another log factor. Like Henzinger, this result also assumed that the graph is simple. This is the state of the art as far as the randomized algorithms are concerned. These results are all in standard Turing machine model or what is known as the sequential model. I would reiterate here and ask you to keep it in mind that the fact that none of these improvements are for weighted graphs. We will come back to this observation a bit later. We will actually be interested in two more models. One is the cut query model and another is a dynamic semi-streaming model. I will use the cut query model in this talk to present the main ideas. So a quick and gentle introduction of this model is in order. The cut query model can be seen as a two player game. One of the players, Sanupon, holds the graph G. I, on the other hand, am called the querier. I can ask Sanupon certain kinds of queries and Sanupon will answer those queries. The specific kind of queries I can make are cut queries. That is, I can send down upon the description of a cut and then upon will answer me with the value of the cut. Here I asked down upon for the cut S1 complement of S1. The cut is the blue dashed line in the figure. Down upon gives back the value of the cut 
I'm charged once. This is an adaptive process. Uh, depending on what I receive from Danupon, I issue another query, S2, and Danupon answers the value of the cut corresponding to S2. The goal for me to make a small number of such queries to know the value of the minimum cut. The model of cut query is inspired from the area of some modular function. The graph cut is a submodular function, and hence the minimum cut problem is an example of submodular function minimization. Those who are familiar with the submodular function minimization will recognize that the cut query model is nothing but submodular function minimization by querying the submodular function. We will now quickly mention the lay of the land in the cut query and the streaming model for the minimum cut problem. We have already seen the state of the art in the sequential model with Cargus work and its improvements with respect to simple graphs. For cut query, it is not hard to see we need to make omega n queries. This follows from a simple reduction from the communication complexity of set disjointness. Of course, the trivial upper bound is order n square where we ask for every cut in order to find the minimum cut. Rubin Sinatol recently showed an algorithm which makes order n cut queries to find out the min cut. Again, for their algorithm to work, the graph has to be simple graph. For streaming, Sadi and others observed that the Rubenstein's algorithm can be adapted to the semi-streaming model to get a two-path streaming algorithm. Because of the restriction of the cut query algorithm, the streaming algorithm also works only for streaming, uh, simple graphs. The trivial upper bound is order n passes. This is because in each pass we can maintain order n cut counters. To find, so to find the minimum among n square many cuts, we need order n passes. A recurring theme that we see that improvements have been made with strict assumption that, uh, that the input graph is simple. A few slides back, I have mentioned that we will revisit this theme. So making progress for weighted graph in any of these three areas or three models seems to be interesting. One may also conjecture that there is a common bottleneck that is hindering progress in all of these models. Now we are ready to present our result. We make improvements in the state of the art of all three models of computation. In the sequential model, we improve Karga's algorithm. The result is highlighted in green. A similar result has also been achieved independently by Gary Chowski and others and went on to win the best paper award in uh, ICAL 2020. Congratulations to them. In the cut query setting, we show a near linear time algorithm. This is typed up to polylog factor because of the lower bound we have mentioned before. We, th this also answers an open question posed by Rubinstein and others in the paper. In the streaming setting, we show a log pass streaming algorithm for weighted graphs. This is kind of incomparable to the previous result of Asadi and others. Even though their algorithm needs only two passes, their algorithm cannot work on weighted graphs. Our algorithm can, but our algorithm needs a little bit more passes. In a follow-up result that is now in archive, we show a nearly tight algorithm for weighted mean cut distributed conscious model. We show a congest algorithm with round complexity square root and plus t for weighted graphs. This is a, this is tight because of the lower bound showed by Dasema and others. Danupon is a co-author of the lower uh, of the lower bound paper. Keeping up with the theme, the best algorithm before was for simple graphs uh, designed by Gaffari and others. To reiterate, all these algorithms follow a common schematic algorithm, except for conscious model, which requires tools in addition to the schematic algorithm. Even though they follow a common schematic algorithm, the implementation details will vary from model to model. We will focus on the cut query implementation today. A few remarks are in order. Cargo's algorithm works for weighted graph, but as mentioned before, the algorithm is hard to implement in other computation models. All improvements that we have seen uh, use techniques different from Cargo. It can be argued that this is necessary. We will see that improving or adapting Karga style algorithm will actually yield algorithm for weighted graph. 
Also, assuming simple graph makes life easier. You have a strong guarantee on the total number of or total weight of the edges in the subgraph, which you can exploit in a number of ways. So the question arises: what is so hard about Kaga's framework? The answer is a subroutine in Kaga's framework, which deals with two respecting cuts. The two respecting cut is defined with respect to a spanning tree T of graph G. A cut is two respecting if at most two edges from the spanning tree T participate in the particular cut. In the figure, the fat blue edges are the edges of the spanning tree. It is easy to check that the dashed blue cut to respect the spanning tree. On the other hand, the same does not, same cut does not to respect this spanning tree, which now has three edges from the cut. Karga subroutine is called two respecting mean cut. The goal of the subroutine to output with respect to a given spanning tree T, the minimum cut with res which two respects T. Karga showed that if one can efficiently solve the two respecting mean cut problem, then there is an efficient algorithm for solving mean cut. Kaga showed uh, it for sequential setting, more or less the same theorem also holds for all other settings that we have mentioned. Coming up with an efficient algorithm for the minimum two respecting cut is the hard part of Kaga's framework or the main bottleneck. Our contribution is a new improved and arguably simpler schematic algorithm for a minimum two respecting cut problem. This helps us achieve one schematic algorithm for weighted mean cut that works across all models. In the rest of the time, I will try to give an overview of the algorithm for two respecting cut in the cut query model. I will skip the implementation details for other models. But before going all technical, we will take a quick detour uh, to a cute puzzle. We, will, we call it the matrix min entry, min entry puzzle. Here the input is an N cross N matrix M, which is with me. You don't get to see M, but you know the value of N, that is the dimension of the matrix. I will also make the following promise to you. The column minimums never move, may never move up as we go right. This property of the matrix is known as the, the monotonicity property. An example is this matrix. The minimum entry of each column is in an orange box. As you can see that the orange boxes form a staircase. That is, the boxes never go up if you go from left to right. The game is to find out the minimum entry of the matrix M. The only access you have over M is that you can ask me for any specific entry of M and I will provide it to you. Your job is to ask from me as frugally as possible. So how many entries do you need to find out the minimum entry of the matrix M? You can pause the video here to think for a few minutes. I will give you the answer in the next slide. The answer is that you only need order n log and many entries. The, here's a sketch of your strategy. This is a divide and conquer approach. You ask for all entries in the middle column and find out the minimum among them. Now you will recurse on both sides of the middle column. A little bit of thought will tell you that you do not need to search in all rows of these columns. The monotonicity property will ensure that the search area can be decreased in half. Very informally, uh, you will search on the left on the rows till the row which contains the minimum of the middle column. On the right, you will search in the rows from the row containing the minimum of the middle column. In fact, this is actually not the best strategy. There is an order n solution, which is a well-known smock algorithm, but it is not useful for our purpose, which we'll go into next. Let us now connect the puzzle with the problem in hand, which is the two respecting min cut. Suppose one already knows which spanning tree T for which we have to find the min minimum two respecting cut. Once we fix such a tree T, this naturally gives rise to a cost matrix. It is an N cross N matrix. 
consider the following graph with the uh, spanning tree with the with the fat blue edges. The ijth entry are, is a value of the min cut which respect the ith and the jth edge of the tree. So there are n square candidate cuts from which we have to find the minimum. Note that uh, in the cut query model, we can find any entry of the cost matrix with just one cut query. The problem that we face over here is that there are just too many cuts to enumerate over. Even in the streaming algorithm, where in one pass you can compute around n many cuts, we need n passes if we want to enumerate naively. So the question is, is there a way we can enumerate cleverly? As it turns out, there is a way, and this is where the matrix min entry puzzle comes handy. Suppose somehow you know the two paths in T where the best candidates are in. If you consider the cost matrix where, where the rows are indexed by the edges of one path and the columns are indexed by the edges of the other path, then the cost matrix turns out to be monotone. In the figure, the two paths are E1, E2, E3, and E1 prime, E2 prime, E3 prime. We have seen before that for, for such a monotone matrix, you do not need to query all entries to find out the minimum. So you only need to query linear number of entries, uh, linear in the length of the shortest path to find out the minimum. There's a lock term here, which I will conveniently ignore. Now the question boils down to how do you find such a pair of paths? Here we use tree decomposition. We can use either heavy light decomposition or bow decomposition. This will give us a bunch of disjoint paths. We will simulate the matrix min entry problem on some pairs of these paths. I will skip the details of how to pick such pairs, but in the next slide, I will present a sketch of the algorithm which gives the condition for selecting such pairs. Also, we use bow decomposition here. This is also known as the, the layering decomposition. Here is the algorithm at a glance. The second step gives you the condition for picking pairs of paths. This is a schematic algorithm, as you can see. By the discussion we have so far, it is not very hard to see how to implement it in the cut query model. You will need order n log n many cut queries. For the streaming model, we use the fact that order n cut queries can be answered in one pass. The algorithm is parallel enough, or parallel enough so that we can use the full power of the uh, statement to get uh, order log n many passes. For sequential implementation, we use a range searching data structure. This requires order m log n time pre-processing and order log n time for each cut query. This concludes the technical part of the talk. I will conclude by stating a few open problems. First, uh, improve dynamic algorithms or conditional lower bounds for maintaining min cut exactly or approximately are both very challenging. For exact min cut, the tree packing can be maintained using existing dynamic minimum spanning tree algorithms. The challenge is again, maintaining the minimum to respect min cut. Deterministic min cut algorithm. Our algorithm is randomized due to the need of a cut sparsifier. A cut sparsifier can be obtained deterministically in almost linear time using uh, a recent result of Chuzoi and others, but the approximation ratio is too high. It's n to the power little of one. Improving the approximation ratio is the first important step. Third, directed min cut and vertex connectivity. Uh, we live as a major open problem for designing an efficient algorithm for any of these problems, either in sequential or streaming or cut query setting or any other interesting computation model. And fourth, graph problems in the two-party communication setting. Can Alice and Bob use order n bits of communication for computing the minimum directed cut or vertex connectivity? We haven't mentioned this, but uh, the problem of weighted min cut can be solved by order n bits of communication between Alice and Bob. In fact, this question is also open and interesting for other graph problems, such as maximum bipartite matching. 
Thank you.